German Chancellor Angela Merkel has called on Russian President Vladimir Putin to pull back his forces from Russia's border with Ukraine. The White House says Russia now has more troops there than at any time since conflict broke out in eastern Ukraine in 2014. The buildup has fueled fears of new fighting, but Russia insists that it is the victim of Western provocations. Russian state television offers a different way of looking at things. It reports that Ukraine and NATO pose a threat to Russia, and not the other way around. The narrative presents Ukrainian soldiers as the aggressors, and shows video footage of Moscow's response. Russian troops engaged in military exercises in Crimea. What to the West looks like sabre-rattling is viewed differently by Russia. For Moscow, it's a necessary reinforcement of its defences against the West. The majority of the Ukrainian military understand the fatal consequences of any actions that would lead to conflict. I hope they won't be provoked by politicians who in turn are being provoked by the West, especially the United States. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky sees Western troops, especially those provided by NATO, as essential backup for his own forces. There's an escalation in the Donbass region. Everyone can see it. When our soldiers are attacked and there are casualties, obviously we must retaliate. A few days ago, Zelensky paid a visit to NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Zelensky stressed that the Western military alliance is Ukraine's only way to end the war in Donbass. Experts in Moscow say that statement would not have gone down well in the Kremlin. Any cooperation between Ukraine and NATO, any help from the North Atlantic Alliance, is a red flag for the Kremlin. But that doesn't mean that all members of the alliance welcome Ukraine's desire to join NATO as soon as possible. Right now, further steps towards membership are not on the agenda. A clear statement that gives many in Russia hope that a war is preventable. The people of Donbass are less optimistic, though the pro-Russian separatists insist they don't want war either. No. If Ukraine takes the first step, nobody knows where it will end. The Kremlin is doing all this to blackmail Ukraine and the West. If troops are reinforced, if the escalation continues, even a small provocation will be enough to set things off, with unpredictable consequences. Russia's defense ministry says this footage shows recent exercises. If the situation escalates, TV screens may soon be showing the real thing. Let's bring in our correspondent Yuri Reshetto in Moscow. Yuri, it was suggested in that report there that Russia's saber-rattling is part of an effort to blackmail Ukraine and the West. Can you explain the rationale behind that? Well, Terry, the experts I spoke to see several reasons for that. First of all, they all say that Russia doesn't want to annex Donbass, as it once did with Crimea. Instead, Moscow sees Donbass as a part of Ukraine, but on uh, its own Russian terms. And that means under largely Russian control. Through the politics in Donbass, Moscow could put pressure on all Ukrainian politics. That's what Moscow obviously wants. Uh, the Ukrainian President Zelensky understands that, and that is why he has changed his tactics towards Russia. In the beginning, he used to be looking for a dialogue with Moscow. Now he is choosing a completely different tone and wants a NATO membership. The second reason is there has been heavily, uh, heavy pressure on the pro-Kremlin politicians in Ukraine in recent months. Uh, all Russia-friendly TV channels, for example, were closed by President Zelensky. Putin didn't like that, and now he's obviously taking revenge. The next reason is the significantly worse relations with the West, the verbal exchange with US President Joe Biden, who called Putin a murderer. Putin never forgets something like that. And finally, there is also the upcoming parliamentary elections in Russia, Terry. The Kremlin apparently needs a new agenda that distracts from internal Russian problems and seeks an enemy from outside. And here, once again, Ukraine fits very well as such an enemy. 
Okay, so that explains the context very well, but Russia does have these troops now massed at the Ukrainian border. Has it indicated how long it plans to keep them there? Well, Russia repeats again and again that the troops are on Russian territory and Moscow would be allowed to do everything possible with them. That's true. Also, Russia can't disregard Donbass because if it doesn't intervene in this situation, the next issue could be Crimea from the Russian point of view, and the loss of Donbass could result in further political losses for Russia. On the other hand, Terry, there is a risk of getting involved in a war with the almost whole West, given that Russia has no allies or even sympathizers in the entire Western world. We can assume how the possible voting in the UN will turn out for Moscow in case of war. The situation for Russia can become extremely complicated. Uh, the consequences, to put it mildly, unpredictable. Ultimately, mm. experts believe it would be better if Moscow stops the Zebalet rattling as soon as possible. What's being done, Yuri, to avoid further escalation in this conflict? Well, obviously, the Minsk peace agreement doesn't work anymore. Ukraine, in particular, no longer seems to feel obliged to implement it. But Russians, too, insist on their own interpretation. But there is, I think, still a chance that this problem can be resolved through negotiations. For that, I think, a new model has to be found, and the West could moderate this negotiation process again. Germany and France have been sitting on, uh, at a negotiation table with Ukraine and, Ru Ukraine and Russia for years and seem to be accepted by both sides. Perhaps the Americans would have to come along, but on the other hand, Russians wouldn't like that. So it means, uh, or it remains, an extremely difficult conflict in the middle of Europe. Yuri, thank you very much. As always, DW's Moscow correspondent, Yuri Rochetto.